A non-Euclidean chessboard, a sculpture that hangs in thin air, a Nerf blaster that reloads by the handful. I found 10 surreal 3D printable projects, each one free, and each one featuring a wildly different way to boggle, baffle, and on balance, blow your mind. But first, I've got a question for you. How many quarters are in this sock? Ladies, gentlemen, and cyborgs, welcome to the brand new Void Star Lab. Our previous location collapsed in a manner both unceremonious and aqueous, but there was a silver lining. I got to plan my perfect personal print farm from the ground up. Okay, it's in a basement, so like it's technically the ground down, but whatever. This episode was supposed to be a tour, but turns out you people are really not interested in oscilloscope tutorials, and if I dig my algorithmic hole any deeper, YouTube will make sure the final Void Star Lab is a cardboard box behind a GameStop. I'll tell you why. Let's sneak a peek at the gear we'll use to pull off today's first mind-melting model. This is the crown jewel of my workshop, a custom-built laboratory-grade fume hood from Century Air Systems in Cypress, Texas, designed to my specs specifically for resin printsmanship. This powerful fan imprisons the stink in a full foot of HEPA filters and activated charcoal, so even when I'm sitting right in front with the door half open, I can't even catch a whiff. Now, we will be able to do more resin more often and make it look better. See, we no longer need these orange hoods, so you get to watch every single 50 micron layer emerge from the surface. Thank you so much Century Air Systems for this fume hood and to today's sponsor Anycubic who populated it with the brand new Photon Mono M5S. I don't say this often but you are looking at a true leap forward in 3D printing. The M5S has a 12K panel, the highest resolution display I've ever seen and higher res than most resins can even resolve. But the real innovation is under the surface. The entire vat and LCD are floating on four spring-loaded strain gauges making this the very first self-leveling consumer resin printer. No more calibration cards, no more sticky hex keys, just hit go and the M5S will handle the rest. This thing can even sense the amount of resin remaining in the tank and warn you if you're about to run dry. The M5S can print up to three times faster than the competition. You get all of this for just 500 bucks and they'll throw in a free bottle of high-speed resin. To learn more about the Anycubic Photon Mono M5S, hit the description and while you're down there, you can find links to every model I am about to show you. Let's put that 12k to the test with an infinitely intricate design. Number 10, the Sierpinski 4 Pyramid by Vendikar 1. The Sierpinski Pyramid is a classic three-dimensional fractal. You start with a pyramid and you split it into five smaller identical pyramids. Then you split each of those the same way and continue iterating ad infinitum and or nauseum. Vendikar's design is actually half a Sierpinski octahedron, which has similar properties to the true pyramid, but doesn't have any overhangs that need support. Picking this clean would suck infinitely. By editing the script ourselves, we can fabricate a fractal of any size to any level of detail that will push any printer to the limit of its resolution. That detail is absolutely insane, and I really underestimated it. Math people call these types of fractals sieves, and it turns out that works literally. Not only did Tons of resin stay trapped in the voids, bits of crud from my wash and cure station got like ingrained in that maze. This is an absolutely unforgiving model and even a half hour in an ultrasonic bath couldn't dislodge the detritus. Still, this is a total trip to gaze into and once you understand the numbers, it'll really start baking your strudel. You see, each level of recursion, each iteration cutting things up, slashes the volume in half. So if this were a true theoretical Sierpinski pyramid, we would have zero volume. That would really save on resin. But at every single stage of this never-ending procedure, the surface area has remained exactly the same. Now that we have bent geometry, our next model is going to punch a big fat hole through it. Number 9 is the Wormhole Chessboard by Things Legend Dave Makes Stuff. This is a pair of conventional 8x8 chessboards placed back to back with the middle squares contorted and conjoined into a sanity shredding catenoid horror. On passant, more like on psychotic. This is a lot more printing than it looks. There are a lot of tiles on two chessboards, but as long as you got some time, it's easy and actually a lot of fun to assemble. But the effects on gameplay are downright grotesque. For one, there are now squares on both sides of the board, so to play it, you have to prop the entire game on its edge. Every piece and position needs this little magnet to keep your horsey standing in attention. The twisted topology also means a third of your pawns cannot actually reach the other side of the board, and since eight of the squares now have five neighbors, your rooks, bishops, and queens will pull some truly revolting power plays as they surf the trans-dimensional butthole. 
There's also the question of which side parentheses S to actually begin on. You could face off in the same side as usual. You could start diagonally on facing worlds, classic map, or brace yourself. You could print a second set of pieces and have a four player non-Euclidean free for all. No friends, no problem. Each player can dual wield two sets. Just remember to work out in advance. Does a player have to meet either king or do they have to pwn the whole polycule? I don't know, and the sight of a purple king creeping out of an inverted donut is living rent-free in my head. In the creator's words, actual gameplay on this board is beyond challenging, so unless you're a super genius, this is more of an art or conversation piece. I will have to take his word for it. I don't f***ing know how to play chess. Number eight is print in place articulating critters. It's not really a print, it's like a category. These snakes, serpents, etc. can wiggle and wriggle right off the plate, no assembly required. Brooke and I recently drove to the Diamondback Nozzle factory, and you know what we found in this random convenience store in Armpit Fartsville, Utah? Well, Next to the candy and the R-rated supplements sat boxes of these guys priced like 20 bucks each, and the clerk said they could barely keep them in stock. Turns out most of these are actually paid models, so I scoured the interbutts for the floppiest, friendliest freebies. First, we got the Ice Dragon by Pilots with a jagged crystalline hide. I used inland polycarbonate for a frosty gleam, but silk filaments would probably come out even better. I will warn you, this one's pretty spiky, so if you're summoning this dragon on behalf of a young beast master, you may wish to hunt down a safer species. The Articulated Axolotl Multicolored Remix by Print Brothers 3D is so cute! Multi-material printing creates a lot of waste, but you know what? I have zero respect for Al Gore's stupid f***ing planet, so I scaled this bad boy up 75%, and like 13 hours later, I was nuzzling him and naming him Zaxolotl. Look at his little eyes! His little dimples! But I saved the best for last. Magai Beer's Cobra Pencil Holder, apparently also sponsored by Anycubic. This isn't just one of the longest articulated models I've ever seen. It's the only one that's arguably useful. Print the included pencil cup and let your newly minted danger noodle defend your fanciest fountain pens. I use 3D Fuel Buzzed, a bizarre PLA beer residue composite from the cursed film in episode. I put the thingy up there. I just thought the sandy texture seemed snaky and honestly, I just want the stuff the f out of my workshop. Because I'm a huge masochist, I tried running this fella off in resin. I wouldn't exactly say it went well. I had to turn it sideways to just fit the bed. So a few of the segments got fused together by support material and a few more broke during the very lengthy cleanup process. But you know what? It works and it looks really cool. MSLA stands for make snakes like articulate. Whether you use the spaghetti or the sauce, these all make perfect prints for printing beginners. They force you to tune your printer, but they reward you with rewarding payoffs. Let me show you another excellent newbie print with a double dose of what the hell is going on here. Number seven is the Tensegrity Sculpture. These jagged multi-part models appear bolted to thin air, levitating a few centimeters apart in an oddly rigid way. As much as Brooke wishes otherwise, magic is not real, but what makes Tensegrity a true trip is even after you see the fishing line that's wiring it all together, it doesn't look like it should work. Every one of these lines is running between the top and bottom halves, so what's keeping the whole thing from just falling down? This is not an optical illusion, and your intuition is actually correct. If I give one side a big ol' poke, the pieces collapse and dangle flaccidly. But watch as I bring them back into position. The strings start pulling against each other tighter and tighter till the entire thing is solid and taut. The secret is this middle one. It's tied to these overlapping arms, which pull it in the opposite direction as the other lines, back towards the same piece the arm is supporting. That's why Buckminster Fuller named this construction technique tensegrity, or tensional integrity. It has no support elements that are being squished. Everything is being pulled against each other to create the structural integrity. It's a silly term coined by a silly man who invented a silly car. I recommend the dual tensegrity connected structures by M4NU because two is 100% better than one. Also, the way the two flyers brace against each other just, in my opinion, makes the entire thing feel more uncanny or less canny. But my absolute favorite has got to be 3D Print Bunny's straight up bonkers print in place version, which forces your poor printer to bridge single lines of filament like three inches over thin air. These act like pre-installed strings so the tensegrity begins right off the plate, albeit super duper fragile. 
This has got to be one of the most elegant, clever designs I have ever shown on this channel. Our next model is extremely clever, but no person with a fleck of taste would describe it as elegant. So a few weeks ago, I saw a community post from Lord Draconical, astoundingly longtime YouTube nerfer and self-proclaimed vampire. He was going to a nerf war in Colorado Springs, and I'll be damned if I let this state have two YouTubers in it. I've built some serious blasters in past episodes, so I reached out to the organizers to see if they're cool with me ramming foam tubes through children's eye sockets at 200 feet per second. To my surprise, they said, absolutely, bring your own blaster. I could bring a printed blaster. This is going to be a full length dart only event. As long as it fired full length darts. It's a bit of a weird restriction and I only have a single blaster that can. Sir, now, with, um, now within reason. My caliber and sniper from the caliber and sniper episode will, but only from mags. Those things are like two by fours. So I sought out a powerful printable repeating blaster that raw dogs the darts and I did not return empty-handed. This is the Griffin by Flygonial, a flywheel blaster with a slim silhouette and a manually operated semi-auto pusher. It's like a more powerful 3D printed Nerf Strife, but mine is special. Number six is the Stapler Griffin by the man, the myth, the captain slug, and it trades the basic bitch magwell for a nine round integral magazine with a truly bananas reloading mechanism. When you pull the spring-loaded follower, the entire side of the blaster automatically flops open, so you can just throw a line of darts in there, slam the door, the follower re-engages, and you can resume your cup apocalypse. It's incredibly snick. It's incredibly snick, bro. It's unlike anything I've seen before, and it runs at least as smoothly as the detachable clip version. Captain Slug is, after all, the mech mastermind who made the Caliburn, Talonclaw, and basically every other meta-breaking foam ordnance. But those are all spring and string powered. As far as I know, the Griffin Stapler is his only electric project, full stop. Uh, oh, speaking of that spring, prepare for some barrel strength overproof turbo jank. The follower is being driven by a retractable badge holder f***ing bolted onto the side and looped over a pulley. It's so dumb, it's so smart. I didn't have a retractable badge holder. Uh, I had a VR headset cord manager and that turned out to be too strong. So now the slightest jostle just spray starts everywhere. It happens to every guy sooner or later. I designed some brackets to bolt on additional magnets. I made the entire door smoother and then I got a bit carried away and replaced like the stock, the foregrip, the pretty much everything else. I then made a speed loader because it turns out that just dumping in fistfuls of darts roadhog style doesn't actually work. Womp womp. So funny story, turns out electric blasters actually fire full length darts harder than half length darts. So when the blaster in question has four ultra crush Kepler flywheels and a hundred amps of Kraken motors, the head tends to go one way and the foam goes three other ways. Bring your own blaster. With within reason. I don't really want to point this thing at anyone except Lord Draconical. He's an immortal undead with 800,000 subs, he'll be fine. You may wonder why I didn't get many shots of assembling this thing, and it definitely was not because this was supposed to be a tiny side project and ADHD railroaded me into such a deep nerf rabbit hole I had to construct an entire episode around it to salvage the lost time. Stop looking at me! Here, look at number five, the Hooped Kinetic Sculpture by Dave Makes Stuff. Wait, this guy again? This stupefying spectacle of sweeping circles and syncopating spheres stands in for the splashy set of STL-styled motion sculptures, aka kinetic art and automata. Turning the crank sets six bobbing balls rising and falling just barely enough to squeeze through six sweeping multi-level rings. It's truly impressive in action and a lot of fun to crank, but if we rewind to watch me assemble this contraption, the transfixing effect is hilariously simple. See, the sticks that prop up the balls are riding in a face cam, not the picture-in-picture -picture view of a streamer's pog face. It's a track like a roller coaster. The sticks or followers ride in that groove, rising and falling on the same course as the rings, and of course they always line up. The cam that bobs the balls and the rings they bob through are a single piece. I really like this model because the effect is so transfixing, yet the construction is so simple. Except for the rings, nothing needs any support material, and if your tolerances are just right, you can assemble this thing with zero glue. Mine aren't, so I use non-zero glue. But heed my warning, innocent surfer of the three-dimensional web. If you search for automata, you will mostly see fan art of near automata, specifically its bodacious protagonist. Let's just say most of these models aren't exactly consistent with the established canon. Number four, Hextraction by yours truly. 
What? It's my video, I'm allowed to share my own projects. Extraction is my free 3D printable board game where anyone is allowed to make their own pieces. And even if you don't feel competitive, building up the little Rube Goldberg contraptions is just straight up satisfying. I already featured Extraction on a recent episode, so let's highlight some of the trippiest tiles made by the Extraction community. Smiley Printer primed the Gauss tile, a functional magnetic cannon that immediately accelerates a single ball to ludicrous speed. I got serious seriously nerd sniped trying to figure out a way to reload this thing, so let me know if you can. Lee Olson 79's can tile is a lot more literal with a tiny ramp leading out the barrel. And I'll be damned, it actually works. You can fire balls into the goal to clinch a surprise victory from two or three slots away. Timothy Jackman created this super clever twist on the trap tile, the Newton's Cradle tile. When one side traps a ball, it sometimes knocks the other one loose. Inertia, after all, is a property of matter. Then Andrew Tho 5942 turned the flipper tile on its ear with the one-up tile, featuring a deployable ramp that eats one ball and sends the rest off into the wild blue ye off the table. If you'd like to try Hextraction for yourself, perhaps even challenge yours truly to duel, your opening is in like three days. I'm going to the first ever open sauce, a sort of Maker Fair VidCon mashup, and I convinced them to give me a table just for Hextraction. I'm going to have four boards set up to play, and I'm giving away hundreds of these special edition tiles I designed just for this event. I call them the Sauce Dunk. If you would like to get involved with Hextraction, just download the files and create your own. Collect them all, links below. But I have one more free tile that has nothing to do with this episode, yet is too hysterical not to show. Eli Zupke presents Balls are stored in the pea. Eli, bless his, her, their, or its web-addled heart, even wrote up some rules so you can empty your balls. F***ing mythical. Speaking of physical posts, number three is mind-blowing for all the wrong reasons. This is so f***ing f***ed, you will get an existential crisis from simply knowing there are people out there depraved enough to think of it, powerful enough to make it, and online enough to... Well, you'll see. Number three is not a place of honor. Nothing valued is here. Captain Subjunctive presents Shrexadisi, Squidwamu, and Jars. The dank avatars of the Mimosphere polymerized with the most powerful entities in the JoJo's Bizarre Multiverse. This is a high effort post. Each figure is way too detailed, with memes upon memes that will paint your dreams. This terrible trio quietly festered in the bowels of the 3D printing subreddit back when that site was, if not good, at least endurable. They were hosted on their creator's personal Google Drive under their real name, so out of respect for for the creator of the pillar memes, I re-upped this slanesh of STLs to my own account. If Captain Subjunctive is in the crowd, or Major Subjunctive, if they got a promotion, kindly let me know when you share this on your own account. I will change the link in the description so you can collect your luscious Prusa meters. Meanwhile, I am going to format my entire hard drive and return to the workshop for something significantly more useful, our penultimate print, the Fractal Vice by Teaching Tech. If you're a consummate content consumer, you've probably seen this video already. It has more views than my entire channel. My grapes are so sour I could make prison wine. I gotta break the salt crust and admit the project itself is extremely cool and it just exemplifies what every 3D printing project is supposed to be. But before I explain why, let's explore what. So a regular vice has two jaws. One of them's fixed, one of them moves, they pinch things. It's real rocket surgery up in this biznizzle. But while a vanilla vice works great for circuit boards, Bosnian locks, and other flat-sided objects, real projects have curves. The fractal vice takes the twin jaws and makes the end swivel using a dovetail joint for strength. The face of that pivoting jaw is fitted with two smaller pivoting jaws, each of which gets two more, on and on until the business end is 32 rotating cleats with five degrees of freedom per. When the vice grips your thingy, these little mini vices contour into every nook and cranny, with 62 pivot points acting as levers to force each element into position. It's 3D printed, it's a toy. But in terms of being a project designed for others to print, this 
thing is immaculate. Each piece comes pre-oriented, nothing needs support, and floating holes are covered in a layer of plastic that tricks the slicer into not printing stuff in midair, like my Gridfinity magnet screw hole combos that have probably wasted about 50,000 of humanity's collective human hours. This is how every 3D printable project should be posted. Everyone who uploads 3D files online, especially me, should consider this the gold standard. Things get a bit dicey when you hit the base. You're gonna need a long lead screw, a specific nut, and two steel round rods. Luckily, I have more 3D printers than I know what to do with. I salvaged the lead screw from a Biku B1SE, I grabbed a nut from an Anycubit Cobra, and don't start curling your knurling, I didn't strip a Prusa Mark III down for parts, the rails got damaged when the workshop flooded and I was going to replace them anyways. I actually printed a modified version of this thing with sockets to mount coolant arms so I can use this as my soldering station. I printed the tips out of bamboo PETCF, one of the most heat proof filaments available. I also printed the feet out of that tire TPU combo from the cursed filament episode, it's got great friction so it doesn't slide around, but does that sh reek. I should have put the printer in the fume hood. I'm gonna lay it on you straight. Our final print is a mother humdinger. I didn't think there was any possible way it was printable, even if it was. There's no way to work. Today, we beat the odds with my number one mind-blowing model, the Digital Sundial by Mojoptix. I hope you know how a sundial works. You put it outdoors, the sun casts a shadow, the time is the number the shadow is touching. By the way, the stick is called the gnomon. That's the nomenclature. The digital sundial is the same thing but fancier. Instead of casting a shadow onto the time, the shadow is the time. These angled channels supposedly display the gosh darn time by casting different shadows as the sunlight strikes it from different angles. When details matter, resin is usually what you want, but this is a sundial. UV resin doesn't do too hot in UV rich sunlight, and uh, that would be about as useful as a wireless cable car. I am busting out the bamboo and loading up some 3DX Tech carbon fiber ABS, the only option with decent dimensional stability and great UV resistance. But will it actually work? Gee golly, holy sh it actually works. It only updates every 20 minutes and only keeps time from 10 o'clock to 16 o'clock. That's 4 p.m. in God's favorite country. But that still means this thing is casting 21 different shadows. And that is my collection of 10 3D prints designed to blow your mind. Is your mind blown? Put your minus degree of blowedness in a comment and subscribe. I'd like to thank Anycubic again for sponsoring this episode and providing the uh, Photon Mono M5S. Also thanks to Century Air Systems for the bomb ass fume hood. But the top shelf premium thanks go to our patrons and things members without whom the slick workshop would never happen and neither would Brooks and my ability to eat food. Every episode I pick three lab scientist supporters to thank at random and today's are Binary Construct, Pat Min, and Mr. Jeeves. Our most righteous collaborators are David Gomez, keep to yourself what the Chuck, Bitrot, Dysfunctional Potato, SXP, Turner Zay, Schleppy the Schwagster, The Benevolent Misanthrope, Moonkin, The Suits Ruined Our Fun, Caster the Catboy, and E to the I Pie. As you can see, I've transferred their names to the new printer room where they will live on in infamy forevermore. I also hid their names somewhere in today's video presentation. Can your significant other who is sitting next to you pretending to be asleep in the hope you'll shut this video off find them? Last but not least are our lab assistant supporters. These electromicrographically supercalifragilistic expialidociously anti-disestablishmentarianists include Trump did nothing wrong, you might want to change that, Michael, Doom Crew Inc, Bum Tickly 69, visit Omaha3dprints.com for all your 3D printed project needs, Pussy Nugget, in bed, ugh, burn it, the lizards are watching sack, my younger better dressed brother Micah Friedman, the Antifa, Max Lux says you're too hard on yourself, love yourself, idiot, I inspire the next layer's YouTube channel, so you guys should check it out. It might appear on his podcast. Talent Democratic Socialist and Pretty Righteous Dude Dash Sack, Roger Pinkham of the Great Star Theater, Elite Giant, Cliff Henning, Bill Schooler, Good Lady Nat, Queen of Lemons, Victor of the Great Citrus Wars, Bob Dobbington, Tegan, My Dog is a Bear, Thunder Chicken, 
Sir Jack Cooper, the second Wilder frying pan. Nathan Johnson, Nico Quintiens, Nova Ren, Trans Rights, Big Bird Tommy, What Goes Bump in the Night, Travis Hippa, Boots Ivan Poopstein, Scratch Finger, Period Clots, Sharia Coleslaw, Storm B Design, Incognito, RJ Dipcord, Powerful CCH, OX41 Repeating, Aaron Steers, Danny Devoid of Life, My Husband Watches This Sh So High Urch, Sticks Like the River Not the Band, Ashley Coleman, Doctor Misses the Mirrorman, Juicy Legend, Drinker of Juicy Legendary Fruits, Cross Threading is just free Loctite, but seriously, ladies, gentlemen, cyborgs, every name I just read out loud is fake. Seriously, on with the real subscribers. 6A, 6F, 65, 6E, 75, Rinry, SKL, Amanishi, Entropy isn't what it used to be, Nate, Onyx Plague, Bryn Wolf, Shelty, Boulder Creekyard, James, Acorn, Quantumly Tangled, Granville Schmidt, Zach, Dempsaurus, Socks, McGox, Dax, Dastardly Seek, Seth Checks, Samuel Rush, Burn, Doc 3, Steven, 6 foot, 6 figure, 6 pack, Shelty, Microwave, Max Steel doesn't have the balls to play extraction, Sanforian, The Cuttle Fish, Circle Zero, Blamo, Zepf, Cacophony of Failure, One Sleeve, Cody, 603, Jason, Measure Once, Cut Twice, Reglue, Cut Again, VK, 2K, TJ, Vigelli, Kink Shaming, Walrus, K Panic, Pofer, John Loves Jen, Dead Beef, Rusty Flute, DBD, Rust. Ryan Cooler, Varka, Kevin DeGraff, Quality Doggo, Eddie, Handjobs for the Homeless, City Lauman, Reagan, Azunda Wielder of Iron Heater of Shrink, Scroto Sagans, Bob Forbes, Jessica Mauerhand, Jamie, General Buck Targetson, Protagonist, Adam Birch, Kerr, the OG Frog, Sunburnt Cat, Karunamon, Not a Digimon, Dennis Kempin, Anthony Evans, Craft Computing, Cameron Ogletree, Matthew Arrington, Brad Cox, Good Suck, Oritna Snyder, Mike Kelly, John Marler, Lydia K, Iron Rain, Michael Roche, Callsign Carrot, Colin J. Web reminds us that tolerance of intolerance is a paradox. The the monk and I'm working on every resin video and it will be out next week. I promise. You see what I was waiting for? <laughs> Thanks so much for watching. Happy printing, and I will see you in the future. Well, you're not tied up. You just leave. Psych!